How do we go about controlling individually addressable LEDs using an Arduino? LEDs can add some pizzazz to your projects, to your home, and if you are not a complete loser, to your gaming computer. Let's get started. The materials we need are an Arduino, a 330 ohm resistor, a 100 microfarad capacitor, jumper wires, and of course LEDs. These can be sold on Amazon or any place that sells addressable LEDs. To build the circuit, we plug in the power rails from the ground and 5 volt on the Arduino, and then we plug the capacitor with the positive end on the 5 volt supply through the power rails. We take pin number 2 and set it up through a 330 ohm resistor, and then we take the jumper wires and plug them from the resistor and the positive and negative ends of the power rail. From the LED strip, we notice we have three wires. We have a red, black, and a green. We take the negative and plug it into the ground wire. The 5 volt goes into the red wire, and the pin from the digital output on the Arduino goes into the center here. So now that we have the circuit completed, let's jump into the code. First thing you want to do is to download the Fast LED library. Open your library manager in the Arduino IDE and type in Fast LED and then click install. Once you have the library installed, you want to include the Fast LED header and then we want to define the LED data pin, which for me it was pin 2, but you can use any pin you'd like as long as you set up the circuit that way. Then we want to define the number of LEDs we use. My LED strip came with 60, but in this video I'm only going to be using 12 of them. Now let's create an array of type CRGB, and the length of that array will be the number of LEDs you have. Now let's go into the setup function and set up the LEDs. We want to use the fastled.addleds method, and inside angular brackets we use the type of LEDs we have, minor WS2812. These are controlled on the LED pin using the RGB calibration, which we'll come back to later. Then in parentheses we say that those LEDs will use the array we declared earlier and that there are 12 LEDs present, which is num LEDs. Next we want to set up a power failsafe by limiting the max power in volts and milliamps to 5 volts and 500 milliamps. This just makes sure that the Arduino is not drawing too much current. Then we want to clear the LEDs every time we upload new code by using fastled.clear and fastled.show. So let's calibrate the LEDs. Normally the order when you write the LEDs is first is red, second is green, and third is blue. So to actually write a single LED, we say the LED array at the zeroth element is CRGB, the color of 25500, which should correspond to red. We're going to say the second LED will correspond to green only, and the third LED will correspond to blue only. Now we say that fastled.show to actually show the results on the LEDs, and we can see that our order is a little bit off. Instead of having red first, we have green first. And to fix this, we come up into the setup function and say that instead of RGB, the order is green, red, and blue. Now you just have to change this to whatever result you get from running the code below. Since my order is green, red, blue, I change the calibration, and whenever I run this code, the proper values are spitting out to the LEDs. So now that we have the LEDs calibrated, let's turn all the lights on the strip red. So that's going to be using a for loop. We're iterating through the entire array of LEDs, starting at zero up until the length of the array, and we're going to say that for every LED, we're going to change the RGB color to 25500, which is red. We say fastled.show to actually show the values, and when we upload the code to the Arduino, we could see that all the lights turned red. And we can change this value around, so if we want all the values to be green, we change the second value to 255, and the value should turn to green. And if we want to do a mix of colors to produce, let's say, purple, we can change the red value to 255 and the blue value to 255. And when we upload that code, we get somewhat of a purple. It's kind of hard to see on camera because this iPhone camera is not the best, but you can see we're generally getting purple. So let's say we want to keep this purple color and make the lights flash. So to add a flash, we use the method fastled.setBrightness. This is actually setting the level of the brightness of the lights. And we want this to increment starting from 
zero and it increments based on whatever iteration we are in the for loop. So it's getting brighter for every iteration we go through. And to reverse the flashing effect, we copy and paste the for loop down and reverse it. So we start at the number of LEDs, which is 12, and we decrease the value. So the brightness starts high and it goes low as the loop progresses. We add a delay just so that we can see the effect take place, and when we upload the code, we get this flashing effect. But it's pretty fast, so let's increase the delay and upload. We can see that the flash slows down a little bit. You just have to tweak it to whatever speed you want. So our final task in this video is going to be to turn the lights from green to blue as we progress from left to right. And we do that by decreasing the green RGB value by 20 every iteration. Because after 12 iterations, the green value will be close to zero. And then we say for the blue value, we increase from zero by 20 every iteration, because that will end at 240, which is close to blue. Now for the reverse for loop, let's start at red and transition to magenta. I typed it completely wrong in the video, but we want to start the red value at 255 and gradually decrease it. So the red value here will start really high and then gradually get lower because it's a reverse for loop that starts at 12 and goes all the way down to one. Then we want to increase the blue value as we progress. And it looks strange that we're subtracting a value to increase it, but that's just because we start at a high number and we're subtracting it by less and less as we go on. When we upload the code, you can see that we're changing colors with respect to time. From left to right, we transition from green to blue, and from right to left, we transition from red to magenta. This video is just the starting point for individually addressable LEDs. You can do a lot more with these. You can tweak the delay values, the brightness, and the colors, all to make your own custom patterns. I'll be sure to make more videos in the future for some more advanced LED control. But until next time, thanks everyone for watching, and if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks everyone for watching.